we're going to have a look at interpreting skew. So skew is a way to describe the shape that the distribution of data makes when it's displayed in a histogram, a box plot, a stem and leaf, or using a statistical diagram of any type, or even the summary statistics. The shape of the graph depends on the distribution of the data. When data fits the following criteria, it is said to be positively, negatively, or symmetrically skewed. So we can see here, and hopefully we're okay with histograms from GCSE, if we have a small piece of data at the beginning, then a large piece, and then it slowly decreases. So we can see here that the highest uh, frequency or frequency density is towards the beginning of our histogram, and then it slowly decreases. Or if the median is closer to the lower quartile than it is to the upper quartile, which is then described here in words, Q1 minus Q2 is smaller than Q3 minus Q2. Or if the mode is less than the median is less than the mean, then it is said to be positively skewed. And it could be asking you to look at any of these to decide on the skew of the data. This one is used quite a lot as well as as well as the graphical representations of the data if however it's the other way so we have a large the high point of our frequency density towards the end of the data or the median is closer to the upper quartile again explained here in symbols or the mode is bigger than the median, is bigger than the mean, then we describe the data as being negatively skewed. Symmetrically skewed is another one where it comes up quite a lot. Um, we have a whole topic about symmetrically skewed data. And you can see here that the histogram is symmetrical. We have an even amount either side of the highest point of our frequency density. The median is in the middle or close to the middle of our box plot. Again, here explained in symbols that the uh, median minus the lower quartile is the same as the upper quartile minus the median, and that the mean, the mode, and the median values all take on the same number. So in AS statistics, you do not need to find the skew of a set of data. You just need to comment on its distribution. So you need to be able to comment on whether something is positively skewed, whether something is negatively skewed, or whether something is symmetrically skewed. So we have a first example here. We have two box plots, which we've just been looking at in the previous section. If you missed that video, it's the interpretation of data box plots video. Uh, and that includes outliers as well, which is what this symbol here represents. So fell runners from ESK Club and IRT Club were keen to see which club had the fastest runners overall. They decided that all the members of the club would take part in a fell ray run. The time each runner took to complete the run was recorded and the results are summarised in these two box plot here. So we can see here the ESK runners and the IRT runners. So write down the time, so these first ones are just us reading off the box plots, which is the main thing that we will have to do with box plots in A-level statistics. Write down the time by which 50% of the ESK club runners had completed the run. So if we're talking about 50%, then we're looking at the middle of the data, which is the median value, which remember is the line in the middle of the box plot. And here we can see that that is 45 minutes. Make sure you read it off the correct one. It was the ESK club, so we looked at the ESK box plot. Next, write down the time by which 75% of the IRT runners had completed the run. This time we have to be careful about which way we interpret our data. So because we're talking about time, the smaller the time, the quicker they completed the run. 
So we want the time by which 75% of the people had completed it. So we're starting at our minimum value. When we get to our lower quartile, that's quarter, lower quarter, so that's 25% of the data. When we get to the median, remember what we just said, that's 50% of the data. And when we get to our upper quartile, that is 75% of the data. So the time we want here is 60 minutes. Then we're asked to explain what is meant by the cross on the ESK Club's box plot. So the X represents an outlier. This means that the time for this runner which we can see from the graph is at 80 minutes is very different in this case longer than the other runners times for ES K. The question continues on to the next page. Compare and contrast the two box plots. Just looking ahead a little bit, we can see here we're having to comment on the skew. So we're not actually going to mention the skew in part D. We're just going to talk about the consistency or the spread and the central tendency. So remember what we said before in the box plot section. The central tendency will be talked about through the median. So we already know that the median for ESK is 45. We can see here that the median for IRT is 52. So ESK is 45. IRT, just double checking that it's 52. Yes, it is 52. So on average, ESK runners were, and you have to remember, like we said before, the smaller the time means the quicker they completed the run which means that the faster they were. So the ESK runners were quicker than IRT. And remember to say how we know this. So we know this because the median is smaller. Having a look now at the interquartile range, reading it off the graph, for ESK we have 55 minus 40, which gives us 15. For IRT we have 60 minus 44, just reading it off the graph here, which gives us 16. So ESK interquartile range is 15, IRT was 16, and that's the interquartile range. So the running times for ESK runners were more consistent than IRT and we know this because the interquartile range 
is smaller. Remember, as we said in the box plots and outliers section, we could also have said the running times for IRT runners were more varied than, I, uh, than ESK, and we know this because the interquartile range is larger. So then we're having to comment on the skewness of the two box plots. So if we go back again, We can see here that in ESK, the median is closer to the lower quartile. And if we have a look back here, that means that that has a positive skew. So ESK running times have a positive skew. if I spell skew correctly. And remember that this means more runners completed the run in shorter times. If we have a look back again for the IRT, we can see here that the median, it looks symmetrically, or if not actually symmetrically, almost symmetrically distributed. So IRT running times have an almost symmetrical distribution. And this means the uh, times to complete the run were evenly or almost evenly spread. So what conclusion can you draw from the information about which club has the faster times? So if we have a look back again, one last time at our graphs, we can see just right by looking at them that the ESK have shorter times than the IRT, except for this member. So it's a good idea to include all that information in our conclusion. So ESK runners are on average quicker than IRT. However, they also have an outlier which is also the longest time So now I would like you to try, pause the video and try the no you try question. Again, very similar to the questions that we had on the runners. So hopefully you've paused the video and given the no you try a go. Here we have shop A and shop B, which are both selling mobile phones. They record how many they sold each day over a long period of time and the data is collected and represented in these box plots. So shop B says that 50% of days they sold 60 or more mobile phones a day. State whether or not this is a true statement and give a reason. So we can see here that the median is there for shop B. 
which if we go down, it's directly halfway between 50 and 70, which means it would be 60. So that means that the statement is true. And the reason for that being that the median, which represents where 50% of the data is, is at 60. Uh, shop A says that 75% of the days they sold 40 or more mobile phones. State whether or not this statement is true and give a reason. So if we want them to sell more on 75% of the days than 40, that means that this time we're going to start from our maximum value. When we get to this value here, that's 25% of the data. When we get to this value here, that's the median, that's 50% of the data. And when we get to this value here, that's the lower quartile and that's 75% of the data. And if we go down, that's directly between 30 and 50, which would give us 40. So again, that is true because the lower quartile, which is 25%, has is below that value. Remember, we were looking at above 40 or more is at 40. Compare and contrast the two box plots. Remember that this time that means that we're talking about the median and the uh, interquartile range. So we can see here that the average number of mobile phones sold is higher for shop B than shop A and we know this because the median is higher Talking about the spread of the data, we can see that the number of mobile phones sold and this is per day, just checking what it was uh, for, per day is more consistent for shop B than shop A and we know this because they have a smaller interquartile range and we can see that again in the box plots this interquartile range is much smaller than this interquartile range here okay so lastly we're talking about the skewness so we're commenting on the skewness of the two box plots again here we do have a slight negative skew but you could also say that it is almost symmetrical so shop shop a mobile phone sales have an almost symmetrical slash slightly negative because we can see if it's closer to the upper quartile and if I just go back to the graphs that we were looking at it's slightly closer to the upper quartile so slightly ever so slightly negative skew whereas for shop 
B, mobile phone sales. We can see that it has definitely got a negative skew. Thank you very much for listening.